Hello right bags, it's Jade. Welcome to a Stranded Deep beginner's guide for the first two days. I've already shown you guys how to make your own custom maps. If you want to make the game a little bit easier or harder or just a bit more interesting, you can do that. Uh, you can adjust the options to turn off sharks as well as make the game either permadeath if you want that more challenge. But today we're going to be focusing on just the first two days. Quick edited guide showing you what you should do, what you shouldn't do, and what I find the most useful. I'm sure you guys have got more tips for me. Let me know in the comment section if I missed anything, but this is pretty much just how to survive them first two days. Press LT and then pull it and you should be able to pull your raft in. You can get around the other side, hold LT or L2, and then press RT or R2, and you will eventually push it, just like that. That's a great way to fix stuff that's really stuck somewhere and it makes your life a lot quicker and easier than dragging it all the time. Obviously pull the raft directly in so it's well on the land. And the next thing, absolutely make sure you take a look inside the life raft storage. You've got rations. You don't need to worry about food, not even water. Rations give you water supply as well as food. You've got a little compass there. That's gonna be useful in a while. And a duct tape won't be useful for now as you're not really gonna unlock any recipes that can make stuff with it just yet. Remember, everything is associated with your levels. As you do more, you'll increase your hunting, cooking, harvesting, physical and craftsmanship. So far, I've not noticed anything that says making one type of thing over another is gonna get you more craftsmanship. So the more hunting you do, the better you're gonna get at it, so you'll kill animals faster and you'll lose less ammo. When you're cooking, it decreases the cooking time overall, the more levels you have. Crafting means that you have to hit things with fewer hits, so it basically speeds stuff up when you're building structures. It also obviously unlocks the different levels to access higher recipes. When you get to the later stages of crafting, it's gonna take significant amounts to get to the higher levels, like level six or seven. You're gonna to need to build big, rafts and big bases if you want to get the most out of it. For your physical skill you just need to do more running and swimming and it will give you more stamina while doing them activities the higher levels you get. Harvesting decreases the number of hits required to gather so when you hit a tree you'll probably take the tree down within only three or four hits if you're a higher level. Same thing goes for items being returned to you. You can destroy structures you've built and you will get some resources back the higher your level in harvesting the more of the resources you get back and none goes to waste these plants while they're pretty they don't seem to have much of a use maybe they'll be ha happening in a future update but right now there are no recipes that use the wavavula plant tarpaulin's always good pick up all the stones you can obviously this is a harvesting survival game you should know this this plant particularly is going to help you breathe underwater for longer you need two of them, so make sure you grab these. You'll need this in a little while. Although you will have to be at least crafting level four, I do believe, before you can make them. Grabs are best just avoided until you get yourself a little spear. You can go ahead and try hacking away at a knife. Just make sure you're crouching while you do it. Otherwise, the crab will kind of mess you up a bit. Top tip as well that I've not even followed, leave your paddle on your boat. It doesn't really make an effective melee weapon, so you're better off just putting it back. Yucca plants are going to be your best source for getting fibrous, and this is what you're going to use to make lashing or rope. As soon as you get on the island, or any island, go for the yucca plants first and harvest every single one available so that they respawn in a couple of days quickly. If we hold R1 or RB, you can actually quick craft whatever you've got in terms of resources. I can make a stone tool. So let's do that, and let's hack away. Now I've turned the tutorial off as I've played the game a fair bit now, and I think there's a quicker and easier way to get set rather than just doing exactly what the tutorial says. This will take another day or so to grow back, maybe even two. There's one more just hidden away in the rocks here. And there's one more here too. You can take damage while falling off of heights. Be careful. For that, to fix it, you're going to need to have to craft a splint. Now I'm okay with that. That was just about okay. But anything bigger than that and you will have to make yourself a splint. One of the first upgrades you want to concentrate on is a tool belt. This really helps keep in lots of inventory space. As long as you find two tarpaulin, you'll need a second tarpaulin to make a water filter. So if you only find one, save it for the water filter. Otherwise, make the tool belt upgrade. If you hold R1 or RB, you can see your tool belt there and you can upgrade it so you've eventually got four items. I'm going to make one more lashing and we'll get our refined knife. And this is something we're going to put in our tool belt up top. Press up on the D-pad and then go down to whatever you want to add to it. 
and there we go. I've now got a quick and easy way to pull up my knife. These plants here are a lifesaver. These will cure your poison. I've already done a guide on all the consumables, so if you want to know all the potions, go and check it out. But you need two of these. Usually there's only one on the starting island, so you have to normally go to another island. In the meantime, you must avoid the purple starfish that you see sometimes lying around in the coast or just in the shallow waters. This is exactly what I'm talking about. If you get poisoned on the first day, you're pretty much going to die unless you really, really quickly move to another island and make that poison antidote. Poison diminishes your health and it will just keep going down. No matter even if you've got a full food and water bar, it will start killing you. Doesn't matter how many bandages you craft, you have to get your food and water above four bars for it to regenerate over time. Sleep doesn't really affect it either. My SPF is getting pretty hot, so we're gonna to have to dive into the water in a moment just to take cover. Later on, you'll be able to make an aloe balm and this will stop you getting sunburnt and protect you for a good few hours afterwards. But for now, in your first few stages, you pretty much are gonna to have to just hide underneath the water, unless there's a lot of shade. It doesn't really work if you're only partially in the water. You do have to have your head completely under. Just bear in mind that you might drown if you're not paying attention to the blue bar, which is your oxygen. It replenishes almost immediately, so you can keep going back and under, and you want to get at least two SPF bars filled back up before you go exploring the rest of the island. And obviously pay attention to the hottest parts of the day, usually between 12 and 3 o'clock. Two bars should just about do it, let's go. Now if you're really quick, you can catch some fish even just attacking them with your little knife. But to be honest, you probably don't need to do that. Like I said, you've got rations, Although we need to learn to cook to complete the tutorial part, it's not really a necessity. So don't spend half an hour chasing fish or trying to hit a crab. Gather up any loose bits of sticks and rocks obviously are really important too. You can carry a maximum of up to four of any type of resource inside your inventory, except possibly big logs. And some materials like fibrous plants, you can carry up to 12 in one slot. You'll often find you're over encumbered and you just haven't got enough slots to hold stuff. This is why you need to upgrade the tool belts as much as possible. Now these red crates are pretty useless. I've never found much inside them at all. Hopefully one day they'll actually add some loot to them. Now, controversially, I'm gonna say go and explore some of the wreckage that you see around you before you even think about making a water still or anything else. Like I said, you don't need water or food straight away. Your bar's are pretty healthy and you can always eat a coconut if you're desperate for water. But then ration bars that we've got inside our raft will help us. So before the end of the day begins to close in, drop some of your stuff that you've got and go and explore some of the wreckages. You will come across some smaller sharks on the starter island and pretty much in and around some of the shallow waters. But don't worry, these sharks are docile. You can't kill them, you can't attack them to get any meat and they won't hurt you. It's only the bigger ones that you have to worry about. Depending on what wreckage you've got, you may get really lucky and have something decent. Or on this occasion, you've got the little cruise boat, which is pretty much more or less useless. There's not much in here at all. Other than that console, you'll find a small locker sometimes just behind the bar, but that is pretty much it. Don't forget your water. And be careful that you can't actually swim out of the windows. You've got to go right out the back and get up before that yellow bar closes in. When you run out of oxygen, the screen will start going black. That's when you know you've got to get air quickly. As far as I know, loot doesn't respawn really in the wreckage. So once you've explored one and you've completely got everything off it, that's it. You can forget going back to that again. At night time's closing in, don't worry, we're going to be all right. We're going to focus on getting as quickly as we can to the other wreckages before it gets too dark. Let's see if we can get to this one. That red bar is your stamina. You won't be able to do much while it's going back up. Just keep swimming around till you find a doorway. And then go and raid whatever's inside. Really not having much luck with this one today. It's usually only the lockers and the consoles that have gear and items in them. Or some wooden chests that you'll find often in some of the larger ships especially. And we've got ourselves a refined hammer. This is perfect and this is the reason why you should go and explore the wrecks as soon as you can. That refined hammer is going to help you to build bases and a hell of a lot more. These vehicle parts are to build your gyrocopter as well as make a fuel burner later so that you can create your own fuel and escape the game. That's not necessarily going to be useful just now. What you can do is pick up the whole crate if you want to save time. 
In fact, if you put items back in it, you should be able to then pick up the crate. It's a quicker and easier way to transport stuff. It's getting dark now. We're gonna lose the light. So let's head back and make ourselves a campfire. So in our first day, we've lost three bars of water, but our food is pretty decent, only losing one and a half. Now, unlike other games, the dark in Stranded Deep isn't that bad. You can still go ahead and see quite a bit around you, especially when the moon's out. You'd have to be really unlucky if it starts raining or if it gets really dark and gray. But now we've got all our items in a nice little pile, let's think about building ourselves a campfire. We need four sticks to do so. Let's see if we can grab another one on the floor or we'll go for a thin, small little tree. This is perfect. You get two sticks from these normally. Obviously it's a lot quicker with an ax and we're gonna craft one of them up very soon. Ah, I just got hit by a crab. That's the one bad thing about running around in the dark. It's harder to see the crabs. There's my campfire. Now we need to build ourselves a fire starter. For that, we're gonna need more sticks. Two, in fact. Let's try and not get done over by a crab this time. Quick craft again, hold the RB, R1, and then go ahead and make your kindling. And there you go, that'll burn a good long while to keep feeding it so it doesn't go out. Just add more sticks to it when they're in your hand. Drop the kindling right next to it as it will be useful for later. And then if you did manage to get yourself a fish, you might as well go ahead and cook it or any other type of crab. Like I said, if you're desperately hungry for food, you've got three rations inside. One thing though I will say is the end game relies on you having a lot of food. So it might be a wise idea to keep some of the stuff that you've got in terms of the rations that you find. It might be easier to transfer them and not have to worry about them spoiling. All food does spoil, particularly if you leave it on the ground. Now, why can't you put the fish on it? Well, you've got to gut it and trim it first. So make sure you've got your knife and go ahead and skin it. You can skin a variety of animals. If you catch oh, a bird gross. or a bat even sometimes hanging from the trees, they can also be skinned and eaten. And there we go, we've attached it. That'll take a good few minutes to cook and you'll hear a little ding. You can hear a little sizzle sound. To increase your cooking potential, you must be close to the fire. If you go out of earshot of it, that's it. You won't get any experience while cooking. So make sure you're within the sound of it. Let's take a look at what else we need now to make our save spot. Three sticks, one lashing, and four fronds. Let's pin that one. I'm gonna make some more stone tools because we're gonna need them to make ourselves a ax. The crude ax needs two of them. Oh, you just heard that ding. One stick and one lashing. Let's drop all the rest of our gear at the moment we don't need, including that chest. Now you can see I've got three water just about and I've got five food. Let's eat the small food. It increases the food by one whole bar. Small pieces of meat won't necessarily give you any more water. It's usually only rations and fruit that will do that too. I've got my two stone tools, so what we're gonna do is go and get a stick and we'll be able to craft ourselves an ax. Don't worry, nothing's really gonna get you on your first island. You'll be really unlucky if there was a snake, but when you go to other islands, you will find the night snakes a little bit more active, and this is what you need to be careful of. Generally, during the day, the snakes don't move around too much. You'll hear them rattle and just avoid them, but at night time, they tend to move about a little bit more, so that's a bit harder to avoid. Usually two or three spear hits will take it down. Don't go after your spear if it doesn't kill it within the first hit, otherwise this is what's gonna to happen to you, just like it happened to me when I went and explored a second island. The snakes can be really hard to kill if you've only got left with an ax to try and take it down. It is possible, but you are gonna get bit multiple times. Every hit is gonna decrease your health by two, and they've got 200 health points, so you're gonna to have to hit it lots and lots of times to kill it. So don't do this, make sure you only attack it with throwable spears or a bow and arrow or just simply leave it alone. Eventually, I have finally got rid of it, and yes, just avoid it. You won't find one of these normally though until you hit the second islands or some of the islands around you. Not every island has snakes, but it's the ones with the big, huge, large rocks tend to have them, and you often find lots of adult boars on these maps and islands as well. There really isn't much point in going near a snake. It doesn't give you any snake skin or any leather. In fact, it only gives you small meat. So it's just not worth your time trying to take one on for food. There are easier things to eat. 
If you just want to be safe on an island, well they will respawn, but only after 7 days. Just to give you a rundown on some of the other creatures you're going to face in the first stages, Stingrays are harmless, they will avoid you, they're passive, unless you go try and attack them. They've only got 45 health points, so a few hits and they'll be gone, and they will give you two small meat. You can find starfish, they can't be interacted with, you can't pick them up and you can't destroy them. Sea urchins will give you poison and you can't kill them, so you just got to avoid them. Sea snakes cannot be killed either, the ones that you see running around, the black and white ones in the sea, avoid them, they will give you poison effect. Just like the lionfish, that will also give you poison effect, but you can use lionfish to make repellent. I've shown you guys how, as I mentioned earlier, in my special consumables video, so go and watch that one. If you're looking for leather, one of the only real ways to get it is by killing boars. Now, boars are harmless to you. They won't do any damage, and they've got 200 health points, so it will take a number of hits to kill them. They'll also give you two medium meat, and this can be beneficial too, obviously, for filling up your food much more. The bats you can hear around you, they only take one hit to take down. They won't kill you or damage you, and they give you one small meat. The same goes for seagulls. One thing to watch out for is the giant versions of some of these creatures. There is a giant hog that will give you four raw hide and two large meat, but it does take a considerable amount of health points to take down. Likewise, there are giant crabs. This is also considered a mini little boss, and it will definitely give you a bit of trouble. So make sure you're attacking it with spears, especially if you can get up somewhere higher where it can't reach you. There's plenty of fish in the sea that you can either grab with your spear, maybe hit with your knife, or go fishing with. And obviously, there's lots of sharks, but I'm not going to cover them yet. Remember, this is meant to be a beginner's guide, but just give you a heads up of what you can attack in the first few islands, and what you should probably just avoid. And that's pretty much all you need to know for the first day or two of surviving. Make yourself a save point, make sure you save the game before sleeping, and a top tip as well, you can only sleep once a night. So no matter what happens, normally there's always a little bit of dark, or you wake up really early and there's still a little bit of dark. Now the fire's gone out, but don't worry too much, we can feed it more wood when we need it. Like I said, we've got plenty of food if we want it in the rations, and right now our food's doing alright. But you'll notice our water is getting a little bit low. So next up, we're going to be concentrating on this, but we need to get to level 2 before we can make it. So craft some blades up, maybe make yourself another axe, and just generally build your crafting levels up to level 2. It's probably a good idea to make as many lashings and stuff as you can find, and while we're at it, we'll have a little drink of a coconut to just replenish a little bit more. You can't rely on coconuts forever though. As soon as you start drinking more than 3 coconuts in a day, you'll start getting sick. When this happens, you'll start losing water, basically getting diarrhea. Needing a little bit more food, go ahead and chop it in two. Go away, Mr. Crab. And you can eat the coconut flesh too. You see our water, it's one and sort of quarter, and our food is just about four. You can see it's gone and increased our food only a tiny bit by about a quarter. If you eat the coconut, it usually gives you one full bar of food. There you go, my craftsman's level's increased, and now we can make our first water still. I'm going to pin it, and we've pretty much got nearly everything we need already. We just need one coconut flask and one piece of tarpaulin. That's why you've got to save at least one piece of tarpaulin to make the water filter. Now you don't have to have all the items in your hand. As long as you're close by them, it will take it that you've got it close to hand. Let's go and get ourselves a coconut flask. You're going to need one lashing for this as well. Now you can go ahead and just climb one of the palm trees, but you might as well chop it down as you'll probably need it later on, especially as you're going to need the fronds that are on top to refill your water filter. I'm just going to go ahead and chop these up here. Now don't chop your coconut up, it's got to be whole. Go inside and you should be able to move over to consumables and make your coconut flask. There you go, we can now make our water still. Let's put it somewhere very close and perfect. Now it will have a little bit of water in it fairly quickly and you'll notice it's just like a campfire, it says you've got to feed it. Well you can see at the bottom it's fronds that you need to feed it with. Let's just put them inside your hand and feed them up. I would leave a good three or four just next to it ready to go whenever you need some. And there we go, we start collecting our first water as well. It's always a good idea to keep this topped up as much as possible. And ideally, you need to keep your water and your food above level 4 at all times so that you keep regenerating your health just in case you run into a crab or something else. If your wreckages haven't been too kind and you've not managed to pick up any cloth, 
you're gonna have to go to another island so really scope out and see if there's one that has got some wreckages from a distance. That's going to be your best bet for finding some cloth. There is ways that you can make cloth, but it involves crafting higher level crafting stations like the loom. Also the loom uses up quite a lot of the fiber plants. So it's maybe not the best bet just yet, but it's definitely something you can consider if you want to spend a bit more time on one island. With the dwindling light just about approaching, now's the time to go hunting and get yourself enough food to cook through the night and the next day you're going to be setting out on a new island. Look out for my next guide coming in showing you how to build rafts, the difference in the rafts that you can make and craft and generally what you should be looking out for when exploring some of the islands. If you found this video useful let me know by hitting up with a like, make sure you've got notifications on obviously if you're subscribed and get the best in survival games, news, previews, reviews and guides. I will see you at bags later.